ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبد رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله ولا صحبه اجمعين اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون صدق الله العظيم Indeed, the praises for Allah, therefore we praise him, we seek his aid, his assistance exclusively, we seek refuge with Allah. We seek Allah's forgiveness and we seek refuge with Allah from the evil which emanates from within ourselves, those harmful suggestions and the evil consequences that emanate from them. Whomsoever Allah guides, there is none to misguide, and whomsoever Allah allows to be misguided, there is none to guide. We give open testimony that Open testimony that there is no deity worthy of worship but Allah. He has no part in the dominion of his creation. We give further testimony that Muhammad, to whom the Quran was revealed, is his servant and messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Peace and prayers be upon him and upon his family, upon his companions, and all those who gather in righteousness and follow thereafter. Amen. Amen. O you who believe, have taqwa, is deep, an incomparable reverence, this fear. That is uh, like nothing else that we have for anyone but Allah. It is his right to be the recipient of taqwa and die not except as Muslims. Surely Allah speaks the truth. Assalamu alaikum, beloved Muslims. Ramadan Mubarak. Allah has blessed us to uh, to be here for this final uh, Salat al-Jumma during this blessed month of Ramadan. So we thank Allah for that. We thank Allah for allowing us to see the uh, See the finish line, very close to it. And we pray that we can look at ourselves in this moment right now and see growth. That we can see progress, not just in our habits, but hopefully, hopefully habits, yes, but, but in our attitudes, the perceptions that we have. We understand that Allah has given us this beautiful month in which the Quran was revealed that we are uh, we are ordered to spend in fasting and prayer, reflection, and charity, that he has given us a month where our obedience, it frees us, which does not necessarily sit right with, with most, most folks. They feel like you're being, you're, you're being obedient, you're giving up things. How could you possibly be, be free? Well, Aristotle, there's a there's a, a, a quote that's attributed to Aristotle, but it's really a summation of, of his work. It says, nature abhors a vacuum. Nature abhors a vacuum. And it really was, uh, it was about basically in nature that there's always, there's always, there's a constant movement, that there is a, um, there's a, a system, right? Nature works structurally and systemically. And that when one, when something is out of place or missing, it will be filled. It won't be missing. It won't be uh, empty long. So this idea of nature, of course, of active, right? How does that, what does that mean for us for, for this month? What are some of the things that we can connect? Or really, I would say that that observation came from, of a, from a, a Quranic, from a Muslim uh, framework. And I don't mean like the Quranic scripture, but there's a, the chronic ethic, the chronic way of, of seeing the world, seeing ourselves. And this deals with our appetites. We don't often think of our appetites in terms of leadership. But these two things go together. Inshallah, that's what I'm going to uh, present uh, uh, in this brief uh, khutbah today, inshallah. This idea of leadership and appetites. So Allah tells us in the Quran that he's given us um, oh, you believe fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed to those who came before you that you may attain righteousness, that you may attain mm -hmm. taqwa, right? The taqwa that is only due for Allah, right? The regard, the reverence, the fear that is only for Allah. And we get there through what? Through managing the appetite. Through managing the appetite, the fast, it is a tool for us to exert leadership over ourselves. 
the leadership of ourselves. Now, because nature abhors a vacuum, if we don't have leadership over ourselves, somebody's going to have leadership over us. Right? If Lisa was given respite for the sole purpose of identifying or showing that we were not worthy of the trust that had been placed in us. He says, okay, since you have put me in the wrong, I am going to make wrong fair seem. I am going to put every last one of these people that you think so highly of, that you have entrusted, you have entrusted with authority and leadership. I'm going to show you that these, these folks ain't worth nothing. So how does he do this? He does this through the art of seduction, the art of, of, of influence and, su and suggestion. As I open, we seek refuge with the law from the evil that emanates from within. Those, those, those suggestions, they are planted, they germinate, they go unchecked, they bear rotten fruit. So it is the it is the appetite that is our first is our first pathway to the most important leadership. I had a conversation earlier. Um, well, they're not children anymore. They're, they're adults now. But your children will take you to task and have you, um, and not just children, but people, it's great to be questioned. It is great to be questioned because it will it will cause you to have to really stop and, and inquire and, and to and to give back the answers that maybe you weren't maybe weren't even aware of that, that you had sitting with you. But the question the question was about the the, the appetites and well if, if Allah has given us uh, leadership so well, are we only talking about people who are in authority positions? Are we talking about people who have positions of, of power? Right, people who have positions of a, there's some status involved with them. So, well, we got to remember once again, we got to think small in order to do the big thing. So, the most important, again, this goes back to the most important leadership position that any of us will ever have is the leadership we have over our own us. Is the authority we exert over ourselves. So, it doesn't matter. You may never hold a position of social leadership, but the leadership that you exert over yourself, that is going to determine whether or not you will be successful in this life or you will be, we mentioned last night, or you will be among the losers. So the appetite is a natural, it is a natural thing. It is natural for us to have appetites. A person without appetites, well, that's not a person at all. That's a person to be wary of. As was, um, uh, what was it? Um, Ibrahim, ladies and gentlemen, right? Said he offered a roasted uh, calf. He said, and they were like, <laughs> we're okay. We, we don't need that. And he was suspicious of them, right? Travelers, human beings, you've been on the road, you just pop up and I offer you hospitality, you have no appetite. Hmm, I'm suspicious, right? So there is. There is a warranted suspicion of the person who has, there's a lack of appetite. Not just food, but a lack of appetite for life, right? The person who does not want to, has no interest in learning, right? The person who has no interest in uh, developing in any particular area, no, you know, the folks who, who say they never want to know that. I don't need to know that. We've heard comedians talk about this, you know, that person who is, oh man, I ain't trying to hear all that. I don't need to know that. I'm fine. The ignorance is bliss. Right? We should be suspicious of that. Because our law, law invites us to question. A law invites us to look at ourselves, to develop an appetite for a question, an appetite for inquisition. Right? The good kind of inquisition. Right? It's reverse. But what we don't want to do is when the appetite is unchecked, we don't want to lose sight. We don't want to lose sight because when we lose sight, of managing the appetite, then the appetite, it goes out of control, right? So sort of to, uh, to Catherine, I feel like I dropped, I gave part of this last night briefly, but the idea of how to move to Catherine, how to move to Catherine, 
The mutual piling up of wealth, it distracts you. The mutual piling up of wealth, the feeding of that appetite for the material possessions, for social uh, capital, right? The standing, the, this, this idea that this is the most important thing, this is the most important appetite that, I, that I'm supposed to engage. It blinds us. It blinds us to the true, to the true reality of life. And that true reality is not understood until we, until what? Till we are visiting the, the grave, until we are in the grave. And we know we are placed in the grave with the purpose of being brought out of the grave. Right? We don't go in there thinking that this is it. This is the rest stop. This is the this is the moment where we get to see what what awaits us. We get a glimpse of what awaits us. But if we don't negotiate, if we don't engage our appetites properly, then we end up we end up losing. So fasting, fasting it saves us from the inevitable consequences of uh, of un uh, uh, of extreme competition, competition that is, that is not managed, competition that is not uh, that is not framed in a proper way, but actually leads to our success. So Allah tells us in uh, this is uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, the hundred and forty-eight ayah. Falakuli wad hatun huwa muwaliha fasta fasta bikul khaira. Aina ma takunu yati bikum Allahu jamian. Inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. And I'm gonna give you two translations. Um, but the point it, it is apparent. So the Quran will be. So for each. Religious following is a direction towards which it faces. So race to all that is good, wherever you may be. Allah will bring you forth for judgment altogether. Indeed, Allah is over all things competent. And this other, the other um, translation is, uh, says, to each of the goals to which Allah turns him, then strive together is in a race towards all that is good. Wheresoever you are, Allah will bring you together for Allah has power over all things. Truly, Allah speaks with you. Once again, within the religious, um, for for scriptural people, there's certain there's, there's there's a reference for the believers. There is uh there there's a reference here. There's a reference point that directs how we see our competition, right? The natural competition that arises when people when people come together, right? And competition is not bad, but Allah tells us it says that for us to that you've all been turned towards the goal. Right, you all been turned towards towards a kibla. Right, there's a there's an orientation that each of you has as a community, but there's also orientation that you have as as individuals that we have as individuals, and that we will will be brought together. Everybody, you know, each community finds its it finds itself. So, that if you want to compete, compete in what is good. Compete in what is good. There's a there's a um, there's a saying in sports. It says if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. That's 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 really insidious, right? You're not cheating, you're not trying. Um, and that's the expectation. You know, uh, the it's only a problem if you get caught. And then you say, well, I thought it was just a over the counter supplement. I didn't know it was gonna make me be able to run, you know, a three minute mile. I had no idea. <laughs> but no, no, that that subtle suggestion, this this lack of awareness that you would that you would uh that you would degrade your soul for a temporary victory. And that's and that's normal. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. But Allah says, for those who, uh, for those of us, you know, who believe, says He's turned, He's turned your faces, He's turned you towards a direction. Compete, race towards all that is good. Race towards the higher, towards what is what is best, what is excellent. And so, there's no cheating involved in that. There's no shortcuts. There's anything we have seen. In this month, there's no shortcuts through the month. There are no shortcuts through the fast. There's no shortcuts through the reading. 
although some, you know, we might, we, we've tried to make what is uh, encouraged easy. So you can read or you can listen, right? You still get it in. So. But we have to, we have to have the discipline in order to go through the steps for victory. All right. There are no shortcuts to real success. And we don't, we don't judge the success by the by what is temporal, by what is temporary, what's passive. Right? You cheat yourself right out of right of the right out of the real reward. Cheat yourself right into hell. So that's not what that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for we're lo looking for the, the lasting victory. We're looking for the competition uh, that actually up, uplifts us, that brings us closer to Allah, that, a, that adds value to ourselves, right? A victory that is not only a victory for us, but a victory that, that we can share. And that is also one of the, the signs, one of the blessings that Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us during this month, is that we get the victory of that day. Right? Whether you've been able to uh, uh, engage in the physical fast, or you've been out there, you know, praying, feeding people, whatever it is. At the end of the day, when it's time to break the fast, and sometimes we, we break the fast in, in, uh, from a physical standpoint, but also there's also a mental, a spiritual uh, aspect of breaking the fast. And we do that best when we do it with others. There's a certain satisfaction that we get out of breaking it by ourselves, right? But the believer, certainly has a reward and a blessing of breaking the fast. But when you break it as a community, when you're able to break it with other believers, it's even more reward. So you share, you share the reward. You share the celebration with someone else. You went through it yourself. You didn't shortcut, but you get to come together with other believers, other Muslims, uh, inshallah, and, and, and to reap the rewards of that, to celebrate the victory of that day. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وفي الحمد لله الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله The praise is for Allah The praise is for Allah And then the praise is for Allah So, in the uh, in this closing of the uh, I want to remind us that our fast is a radical act of of obedience and resistance. It is a radical act of obedience and resistance. It is obedience to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and it is a resistance towards every uh, every suggestion, every call, every incitement that plays on the natural appetite that we have as human beings, but seeks to, uh, but seeks an unnatural response. So it's a, it's a radical act in a society that thrives off of excess, right? Excess consumerism, uh, excess, you know, in just in every way, excess. So our, our pulling back from that as an act of obedience, once again, we're putting a law in the leadership position and we and we are submitting. And in doing so, we gain leadership of ourselves. We gain authority over the trust that Allah has given to us. So it is a it is obedience and it is resistance. And it's important to to first of all let us consider. I'm no neuro uh uh scientist, right? But you know, we pick up a book. Read, read some stuff, you know, get a grasp of what's going on. And I found that the, the whole idea of like neuroreceptors and transmitters and, you know, all of that, um, it's, it's really fascinating stuff. You think about our appetites and you think about what happens when we uh, satisfy particular appetites. And we think about how particular appetites are cultivated, right? Because you don't get it. You don't come here with, with a taste for a lot of stuff that's out here. These things are, are built. These things are, are shaped over time. right? At least to the extent that we see things uh, playing out. So this idea of, uh, not the idea, but 
dopamine, right? Dopamine is the uh, uh, pleasure center of the brain. Makes you feel good. It's the reward center, right? And it's why, you know, I'm still in Dua, you know, asking for freedom from, from the sweet tea that I've, I've talked to y'all about, freedom from the, the Snickers and the, you know, trying to, try to make a pivot. No, I have no business eating some of this stuff, but, you know, like Pookie said, if he calling me, for y'all. <laughs> and these are the things, these are things, what we're talking about. So, uh, you know, we're talking about sugar. Um, you know, that's one of the things. It's the that dopamine, that reward center of the brain. Right? And there, there are four, four things in our society right now we're looking at. Um, sugar, you can by extent, you can just talk about food in general. Um, sex, right? It's a natural appetite, unnatural response, unnatural responses, and unnatural appetites that have been cultivated uh, in our society around a very natural uh, um, appetite that has been placed in us. And then violence, right? You don't often think about violence and it, you know, registering with the reward uh, center of the brain. But if you were to look, there are, I don't know how many, but it's a whole lot of um, like channels or, or on social media about fights, you know, and the, and the more brutal, right, the more it, it, it seems to entice people, right? The less humanity displayed, the more engagement, right? So what may have started out with a curiosity Right, it, it turns into all out. You you looking to see the worst type of behavior um, that one human being can inflict upon another. And the last, um, the last is there is a. And this is more of a from a social standpoint. Our material possessions. Right, we've never. I don't think I think we are at the most materialistic um, stage. Of, of our of our being, right, and that also comes with a reward, right, in the, the the pleasure center, right, being able to have these things, being accepted, um, uh, these are things that 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 we have to look at. We have to look look at as Muslims, right. Our fast is just the it is just the beginning. This is an opportunity for us to inquire about the appetites that we have, right, natural appetites, but how do we respond to these things? All right, this is a, a moment of leadership. So as I'm as I'm closing, what I'm really thinking about, because I think it's it's important for us to what's what's the what's, what's the takeaway? The takeaway is that we do not want to abandon the leadership that we have taken back. We don't want to leave out of this month, you know, after having established some leadership over ourselves, after being aware of our appetites and thinking about. The, the, the number of appetites that we that we have, the natural appetite, it's important that we don't we don't go back to an unnatural response. It's important that we continue, we continue to exert leadership over ourselves. Because when we don't exert leadership over ourselves, then the result is what? The result is being distracted by the, the temporal, being distracted by the uh by the, the piling up, the piling up. And the light bulb do, doesn't go off until we are in the grave. Last thing I want to share with you is, um, is a hadith uh, narrated by Abu Huraira, Rabbi Allah. It says, Allah, Allah's apostle, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said the food for two persons, two persons is sufficient for three. And the food for three persons is, is sufficient for four. And that's it. The food for two is sufficient for three. And the food for three is sufficient for four. All right? Huge amount of teaching in it. Huge amount of teaching in that. It, it makes, because if it's just two of us, it's just, well, before I, before I explain, it, it makes me think about uh, Umar and the way he he felt such a sense of responsibility for the for the Umar that 
any any type of poverty, right? That he could see that that you know that that hit him. It disturbed him. He wanted he immediately had to go out and address it, right? But one of the and there are numerous accounts, but one that I, I love to uh, to reflect on is when he says he sends the the his uh, uh he sends his people out. And he says, "I want you to take take the cut out, right?" Take it out, give it to give it to the people. And they come back to him and he says, okay, we got everybody. He says, okay, well, you've got this neighborhood over here. All right, get back out there again, do it again. And they come back, we got everybody. Okay, I need you to go a little bit further this time and make sure, you know, you get everybody. And they come back, well, we we've gotten everybody, you know, within our, you know, in our lands. We got everybody. He said, okay, I, I need you to go outside, brother. I need you to go, go, go to the other people. Go to the non-Muslims, right? This type of thinking, this type of awareness, not just taking care of who is next to you, but thinking about who is not there. Thinking about who is not at the table, right? In our society, our political uh, landscape, our, just, just the way our society, the, the culture is everybody's looking for a seat at the table. Right? I, I just want to see the table. I want to be at the table. But nobody's talking about making a bigger table. Right? So it is up to us, those who those who understand not just that we are to, to manage our appetites, but to also consider the appetites of, 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 of others. Right? To, to look at what we have and then to look at what others do not have. Right, so it, it means that we will. It means that the believer will never use up all of their wealth. The believer will never use everything that they have just for them, because they say, "Man, Allah has given me." It also means that Allah gives us more than we actually need. That many of us are blessed to have. There's some surplus. Right, we overestimate our appetites. We feed appetites on such a on such a scale. That it becomes uh, it becomes a blinder for us when we don't think about anybody else. But again, Allah has given us this month of fasting, where we not only fast, we also look to do deeds of uh, perform deeds of charity, deeds of service. Right? We we get up close with it. Right? So we are in prayer. We are living the whole life in this month. We are managing our appetites. We're not starving ourselves. Right? We manage our appetites. We are praying. Right? And we're also giving. And that is the balance. That is the balance. That is the healing that is needed for society. So Allah has given us a prescription for leadership for ourselves, but also leadership for society. So we pray that Allah allows us to remain uh, in control of the trust that he has given us. We pray that Allah allows us to continue to grow in our faith and our reliance on Allah. And we pray that Allah allows us to continue to see a portion for others out of what He has provided for us.